If worrying about the next market crash is affecting your investment decisions, you might be making an expensive mistake. People spend so much time worrying about the next market downturn that they miss out on the positive expected returns available in risky assets. I'm Ben Felix, Portfolio Manager at PWL Capital, and I'm going to tell you why you should expect pessimism to cost you in the long run. Stocks have been an incredible wealth generating tool around the world for hundreds of years, but many investors hold pessimistic beliefs about the stock market. And those with more pessimistic beliefs invest less in stocks, leaving potential wealth on the table. As far back as we have data, the optimists, people who have invested in stocks, have typically triumphed. It is true that some stock markets have delivered total losses, and some markets have delivered really low stock returns, but global stock returns have been incredible for at least the last 123 years, delivering an annualized 5% real return measured in US dollars from 1900 through 2022. Data for the Netherlands and the UK back to 1629 and data back to 1372 for one French company suggest that a long-term real return of at least 5% for stocks has been persistent for hundreds of years. To be clear, stock markets have been and will continue to be volatile, and they're certainly not risk-free in the short run or the long run. It's possible to lose money in real terms even over a 30-year period, especially investing in a single country, but even accounting for failed markets and bad outcomes, diversified and disciplined long-term investors have typically been rewarded. Despite the evidence, investors worry about their investments day-to-day, -day, even if day-to-day -day drops won't affect their long-term financial plan, and they assess the probabilities of a market crash like the 1987 or 1929 crashes to be about an order of magnitude larger than the actual historical frequency of those types of events. This matters because pessimistic beliefs affect how people invest. Subjective crash probabilities are negatively associated with flows into equity mutual funds, and the equity share of investors' portfolios is influenced by their perception of rare disaster risk. Market crashes are certainly painful, but markets have delivered positive long-term returns despite many historical crashes. Pessimism is influenced, at least in part, by the media, which has an asymmetric effect on crash beliefs. Articles with negative sentiment increase crash beliefs, while those with positive sentiment have little effect. Additionally, bad stock market outcomes receive disproportionately pessimistic coverage in the media, and there's a general negativity bias in reporting macroeconomic news. When market crashes do inevitably happen, investors' expectations of stock market returns become more pessimistic, despite the evidence that falling stock prices usually indicate higher expected returns rather than lower, and that the probability of a large positive return is higher following a crash. More generally, investors' subjective expectations about future returns are inversely related to market expected returns. That last point is incredibly important. People tend to revise their subjective return expectations, their feelings about future stock returns downward when market expected returns are high, leading to an underallocation to stocks, arguably at the worst possible times. But the fact that expected returns seem to increase when stock prices fall makes stocks a little bit less risky in the long run than they would be if returns were completely random. Personal experiences also matter a lot to investors' expectations about the future, even though personal experience should not have anything to do with the objective assessment of expected returns. People who have experienced low stock market returns throughout their lives are less willing to take risk, allocate less of their wealth to stocks, and are more pessimistic about future stock returns. There are also asymmetries in the way that people learn from stock market information. The formation of beliefs when learning from losses tends to be overly pessimistic, overly sensitive to bad outcomes, and further away from an objective assessment of expectations compared to the formation of beliefs when learning from gains. These errors lead investors to hold more conservative portfolios than a more optimistic investor would to avoid participating in the stock market altogether and to sabotage their long-term returns with short-term decision-making. The good news is there are some potential solutions. An easy one is to look at your investments less frequently. People are myopically loss averse, and we know empirically that seeing your investments less frequently is associated with earning higher returns. Automating or delegating more of your portfolio management process to reduce how frequently you have to interact with your investments may be helpful. For example, investors lose less of their returns to inopportune investment timing decisions in asset allocation funds, which rebalance automatically, than they do in equity funds. My hunch is that this is at least partially related to rebalancing after equities drop being difficult for many investors. Buying stocks when pessimism and expected returns are high and subjective return expectations are low is not always easy. Automating your investment process is only helpful if you're investing in stocks to begin with, which many pessimists are not. 
Financial literacy does seem to increase stock market participation, so watching videos like this may be useful. Tuning out the financial media is another easy win. The media makes investors more pessimistic without offering them any useful information. By the time the media is reporting on something, that thing is already reflected in prices. Media content does not contain new information about fundamental asset values. Since many of these issues are related to errors in base rates, for example, not knowing what long-term expected returns are, or not understanding how expected returns vary over time, getting an outside perspective may be useful. Financial advisors do seem to increase participation in the stock market and boost the share of stocks in investors' portfolios. This makes sense to the extent that financial advisors' beliefs are more informed than their clients. Trust in a financial advisor may also reduce the perceived riskiness of investments and allow risk-averse investors to earn higher expected returns with a financial advisor than they would on their own. It's easy to say that people don't need financial advice because everyone should go and buy low-cost ETFs in their discount brokerage account, which is something that I agree with, but a lot of people simply won't do that. While financial advisors may help people to get invested and get the right amount of stock exposure, it's a bit of a minefield. It's important to watch out for high fees and conflicts of interest, which could easily offset the benefits of financial advice, and to be wary of the fact that many financial advisors make the same errors that a typical individual investor would. Pessimism is expensive. The stock market is an incredible tool for long-term wealth generation, but to benefit from it, you have to participate in it consistently. Myopic loss aversion, overestimating the probability of crashes, having pessimistic subjective return expectations when expected returns are high, and conditioning expectations about the future on negative personal experiences can lead to missing out on the returns that the market has to offer. Looking at your investments less frequently, automating or delegating your investment process, increasing your financial literacy, getting an outside perspective, and hiring a skilled financial advisor with reasonable fees and limited conflicts of interest are all potential solutions to reducing the long-term costs of pessimism. Thanks for watching. I'm Ben Felix, Portfolio Manager at PWL Capital. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with the last person who told you that you need to go to cash because the market is about to crash.